Pod Touch is really the last of its kind. What started as a revolution in the way we consume music has exploded into what the modern day smartphone is, which can play music and do basically anything else you need it to. When the iPhone originally came out, Steve Jobs famously put it as an internet browser, a phone, and an iPod all in one. But when the iPhone released, it was quite expensive and not everybody was willing to pay $500 plus a contract just for a music player. And so in late 2007, the iPod Touch was released. It was basically a stripped out version of the iPhone mainly meant for playing music and retaining some iPhone functionality like the touchscreen and home button. However, these first models did not sell particularly well. What did sell well though was almost every iPod Touch after that. As Apple updated the lineup, they added more features like faster processors, better screens, and an updated app store. The iPod Touch 4th Gen famously featured Apple's A4 processor, which was the first processor they made in-house for an iPhone. This gave the iPod Touch a huge uplift in performance, meaning that it could actually play 3D games on the go, which was something that not every device could do. The decent performance plus the support for the App Store and many other features that the iPod Touch claimed made it the ideal device to give to a kid or someone who just wasn't ready for a phone yet. However, as the mid-2010s rolled in, it was clear that the iPod Touch was losing traction because the prices of actual phones just came down. On the used market, you could get an iPhone 5 for under $100 easily in like 2016. And for that, you could have basically the exact same experience you'd have on the iPod Touch, but it was cheaper and it could actually be a phone if you wanted it to. Upon the release of the 5th generation iPod Touch in 2012, it got a whole new redesign. However, this was the last redesign an iPod would ever get. Notably, later iPods would be emitting features like a fingerprint sensor or wireless charging. Though this was presumably done to differentiate it in the lineup. However, in May 2022, Apple announced that they'd no longer be manufacturing any iPod Touches, and what they had in stock was basically all they had. And obviously this news broke the internet and they were gone by the end of the day. So, that was basically the end of the iPod Touch. And today, I want to talk about that last model, the 7th Gen iPod Touch. It was quietly released in 2019 and only really got traction because people didn't see it coming. However, I'm pretty sure they only released this thing because the iPod Touch 6th generation had just lost iOS support the year before. They probably wanted to just release something out there before they had to kill off the lineup entirely. Inside of the 7th Gen is an A10 Fusion processor, famously featured in the iPhone 7 and 10.5 inch iPad Pro. However, this was 2019 this was released. The A13 was well into production in the iPhone 11 Pro. So it was kind of disappointing as today, this chipset is nearly seven years old. Despite that though, it's actually quite a quick device. It's about on par in speed with my old iPhone 6S, which was quite the speed demon on iOS 13. Except this actually runs iOS 15, which is almost the news released today. There's little to no stutter or lag on this entire device, which is especially important when you want to quickly scroll through music if you're using this as an aux device, for example. The only real thing this device is not like is multitasking, given the measly 2GB of RAM and the 4-inch screen. Granted, you're probably not going to want to be doing that anyways on this kind of device, so it's understandable. But then again, this thing is an iPod. The most important app, well, is the one down here. And the music app runs beautifully smooth. Scrolling through playlists is absolutely no problem. And there's no stutter when you're waiting for things to play in pause like I've seen on older MP3 players, for example. And I feel like more people should recognize that Apple Music is actually pretty great these days. Dolby Atmos tracks sound very rich and full. And it's actually a pretty great listening experience to have on a device this small. Because speaking of which, whatever DAC they use inside of this thing is actually pretty solid. And here we have my full fat pair of Sennheisers hooked up to the iPod Touch. And they actually sound pretty good through it, which is pretty surprising. You do have to crank the volume pretty loud to drive bigger headphones like these, but it's not really too bad. I didn't notice any sort of weird compression artifacts at high volumes. And while this setup definitely looks very ridiculous, the headphone jack is legitimately feature it has over other iPhones. The screen itself though is just fine. It's not gonna blow you away. It gets bright enough so you can change your music in the daytime, and it's also sub-HD. Although at the screen size, it's still basically retina, so you won't even notice. Battery life is just okay, and if you're using this thing like it's an iPhone 13 Pro, then you'll see that 1043mAh battery disappear like all my hopes and dreams did. The camera on the back of this thing is perfectly average. It shoots 8 megapixel photos and 1080p video, which looks fine enough for like insurance claims, I guess. But with that, there's not a whole lot left to this entire device. So, while I might have just seemed to list off a bunch of pros and reasons for buying it, I strongly recommend against buying one. Let me explain. First of all, while the construction of this device is really nice in my opinion, 
The smooth metal back makes it very slippery in the hands and prone to sliding off if you're not very careful. Additionally, this plastic piece where all the antennas are located is very prone to being blocked by your hand. That's right, not even from being like in a pocket or purse, but like if you hold it like this, your Bluetooth headphones will start cutting out. This is only combined with a lack of support for Bluetooth 5 or Wi-Fi 6, both of which would be ideal features for a music streaming device. So getting a case for this thing is warranted to say the least. And speaking of outdated, this thing runs iOS 15, but it won't be getting iOS 16, which kind of sucks because it's dropped with the iPhone 7. Being that this thing probably has the shortest lifespan of any iOS device I've ever seen, only having three years of official support. And while many Android phones are fine having only three years of support because Android gets consistent app support, iOS simply doesn't. While Android 9 was released in 2018 and still receives plenty of app support, iOS 12 is basically obsolete at this point despite being released at the same time. This means that while an iOS 15 is secure now, in 2025 for example, this probably be completely obsolete. However, the most compelling reason not to buy one of these is just the price. At $200 back in 2019, this wasn't too bad of a deal for a little media player you could give your kids or really just something you could use to distract yourself from the internet. But it's 2022 now and the prices of the things haven't dropped in the Apple store at all. And even since they're discontinued, eBay prices haven't changed at all. And you'll even find some sellers wanting even more than $200 for a base model iPod. And we live in a world where you can find an iPhone SE for under $80 easily. And it offers far more features than this thing does, like a fingerprint sensor and a better camera. And the ability to actually be used as a phone if you want it to. Because at the end of the day, what's stopping you from buying a phone and just not putting a SIM card in it? There's not much. In my personal opinion, I think it's pretty sad that the iPod Touch has kind of just become like this novelty's collector device rather than something that you're expected to really use and wear and tear. Because basically, and while I really like my iPod Touch a lot, most people are better off with basically anything else. But with that, this is the iPod Touch 7, the last iPod to ever be produced. And this is Calc G, out.